Hello guys, welcome back to another update video on my multiplayer game, Exmo. If you're new here, I'm developing a free-to-play, medium-paced multiplayer FPS with a variety of different game modes to play. In this update video, we're going to take a look at how I implemented Xmode's cosmetic system. When planning out how I was going to execute the development for this cosmetic system, I broke it down into four parts. The process of how the cosmetics are created, implementing how the cosmetics are defined and saved for each player, the networking and validation required to ensure cosmetics appear for each player in the game, and the customization UI used to view and equip your cosmetics. Starting with how cosmetics are made, all items can have cosmetics or skins. Some skins will just be texture swaps on the default model, but other skins will be full model swaps, and they can also have other custom things like different shooting sound effects. Let's start with how I create item skins that just use texture swaps. I've created a custom texture palette that has 32 boxes for only solid colors, and 4 rectangles that are larger to allow for simple patterns like camos or fades. In Blender, I've UV unwrapped the item models mapping different sections of the model to their own areas on the custom texture palette. You can think of UV unwrapping as unfolding all the faces of a 3D object so they're all laid out flat. This way you can color them using a flat surface, or in our case, the custom texture palette. Here you can see how each section of the M4A4 item model is mapped to the custom texture palette. Now I can give each of these sections a different color, and the four larger sections can even have simple patterns. The important thing to note is that every skin texture for an item has the exact same custom texture palette layout. The only thing that changes is the colors and patterns. If we look in Unity, since the UV layout on the model remains the same, when the material texture is swapped, the model appears to change skins. This will also help streamline the process of cosmetic creation and will hopefully allow me to make more item skins faster. Now how I create item skins that are full model swaps is a bit more work. In Blender a new model will need to be created, usually by duplicating the default item model and then editing it to its new custom look. Again, the model will be UV unwrapped onto the custom texture palette layout. Then in Unity, the actual meshes of the model will need to be swapped as well, along with the material texture. Although this allows for much more custom looking skins, it comes with the downside of being a lot more work to create, since a full new model will also need to be created. The player character can also have cosmetics. The player has three different cosmetic slots, head, face, and body. To create these cosmetics, in Blender, I use the player model as reference as I model and texture the cosmetic around it. Then in Unity, a prefab is created for each player cosmetic. Some prefabs can have custom stuff set up like the googliness of this googly eye cosmetic. These prefabs can then be instantiated or destroyed on the player character depending on what cosmetic is equipped. The cosmetic prefabs are parented to the closest bone, so they follow the player animations. Head and face cosmetics are children of the head bone, and the body cosmetics are children of the spine bone. Next is how the cosmetics are defined and saved for each player. In Unity, I use a scriptable object for each cosmetic, which stores all the information about a cosmetic. Like for example, the cosmetic ID, the skin texture which is used for the material texture swapping, or how the cosmetic is unlocked. Many cosmetics in X mode will be free and can be unlocked as you progress your player level, but some cosmetics will be paid. I'll get more into how paid cosmetics will work later in the video. Xmode uses simple text files for its saving system, and so the cosmetics that you have equipped are saved in its own text file. So each time you load up the game, this text file is read and the cosmetics you have equipped will be applied. Now in theory, if you knew the item IDs and cosmetic IDs, you could just modify this text file to equip any cosmetic in the game, even if you don't have it unlocked. But... That won't entirely work, which brings us to the networking and validation. In order for other players to see what you have equipped for item skins or player character cosmetics, that information needs to be synced over the internet. For item cosmetics, this information is sent when a player equips an item, and for player cosmetics, it's sent when a player is spawned into the map. But some validation also occurs to ensure that you actually have the cosmetics unlocked. Let's use the Shades cosmetic as an example. The Shades cosmetic is unlocked when the player reaches level 10. 
Since equipped cosmetics are saved locally in that text file, when the client connects to the server, it sends what cosmetics it has equipped. For example, the shades. The server then validates this client indeed has the shades unlocked by checking the client's player level in the Firebase database. If the cosmetic is indeed unlocked, then the shades cosmetics will appear for all other clients connected to the server. But if the cosmetic is not unlocked, then instead the default cosmetic, which in this case would be no face cosmetic, will appear for all other clients connected to the server. To put it simple, there are checks in place to make sure that cosmetics are only shown if you actually have them unlocked. Similar validation is done for paid cosmetics as well. Paid cosmetics in X mode will be handled by Steam. So the server validates paid cosmetics by checking with the Steam API to see if you indeed own the cosmetic. Speaking of Steam, if X mode seems like a game you're interested in playing, or if you just want to help, go wishlist X mode now on Steam. All right, the last thing that's needed is customization UI to actually view and equip cosmetics. In the main menu, there is now a customize tab that opens the customize screen. In the player tab, the cosmetics appear in a list on the left. You can use the tabs at the bottom to switch the player slot, head, face, or body. Selecting an unlocked cosmetic will equip it. You can then view and rotate the player to inspect it. In the items tab, the cosmetics appear in a list at the bottom, and you can use the list on the left to switch what item the cosmetics are for. Same here, you can view and rotate the items to inspect them. You can also equip the different gun attachments. You can also shoot the guns. And lastly, you can see the stats for each item as well. And that's the cosmetic system I implemented in X mode. The cosmetics you saw in this video are just the start. I plan on creating many more cosmetics before release. I think it's important for me to touch on why I felt the need to add cosmetics to X mode in the first place, especially with how the free to play model with paid cosmetics and games nowadays tends to go. I want cosmetics in X mode to be a way for you to customize the look of your items and player and give you a reason to level up your player to unlock more free cosmetics. Some cosmetics will be paid though. The cosmetics that take longer to create are the most likely to cost money and will be purchasable through the Steam inventory store. Groups of items might be purchasable through Steam DLCs as well. I don't see paid cosmetics as a way for me to make loads of money. I see them as a way for you to support the development of X mode and as a bonus, get a cool cosmetic to show off in game. X mode will cost money to run official servers, so it does need this revenue stream in order to be sustainable. So if paid cosmetics can bring in enough revenue to cover those costs, I'll consider that a success. Hopefully it does, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now let's take a look at a bunch of smaller additions and tweaks. There's now a simple tutorial that teaches you all the controls and tells you how to change your loadout and gun attachments. I've implemented Steam achievements for those 100% completionists out there. Uni doesn't have any built-in audio occlusion, so I developed a simple Raycast audio occlusion system that lowers the volume of audio sources that you don't have direct line of sight on. This will make audio on the other side of walls quieter and should make it easier for you to identify where you're getting shot from. The flag item for the Capture the Flag game mode now has a new model and it's also now a melee item so you can melee attack other players with it. The larger model should make it easier for you to see who has the flag, and being able to melee attack with it allows you to at least fight back, even if it's just with melee. Player stats are now being tracked. You can view your player stats by clicking your player on the X mode global leaderboard. Stats like kills, assists, deaths, games played, and other game mode specific stats. That's it for this update video. Thanks for watching. Zippy out.